Vanessa Joy and we are diving into what the heck this thing is. This video is brought to you by Datacolor, the creators of Spider Checker. I've got a lot coming for you, but first a little freebie. Download my free posing inspiration guide. You can download it in the link in the description below. So this is a spider checker. This comes from Data Color, and you open it up and you've got all of these colors here. Now, if you're into photography, you've probably seen something like this before, but you may not know what it actually does. I did a whole day of shooting with my model, Juliana, and we use the spider checker throughout. Uh, hold it up a little bit more. Right there, yeah. It helps you find consistency in color, which is really important if you're shooting something like products or a dress line like this. This blue shows up as a completely different blue in your photos than the blue that it actually is. Your client's going to be pissed. In addition to helping find true color, it also helps create consistency across multiple shoots as well as multiple cameras. Now we didn't use multiple cameras, but we were shooting throughout different areas and different times of the day. So I wanted to make sure that I use this at the beginning or the end of every shoot location. So you've got 48 squares here with a variety of different colors and it's in a nice rigid case. Now this case is gonna get beat up a little bit in your bag, but it's important to not let the inside get beat up. You want this to stay consistent so that your color stays consistent. Don't leave it in the sun. Don't spill water on it. Make sure this baby stays closed. So here's what you do. On your shoot, you take photos of your model or scenario holding the spider checker. Once you get back to your computer, the spider checker's calibration software analyzes the results of those test photos and instantly creates a profile, which then you apply to your raw workflow, whether you're in Lightroom, Photoshop, or Capture One. It basically helps you automatically color correct based off of the profile that you've set from the pictures that you've shot with the spider checker. If you're someone that does a lot of editing or maybe you're doing headshots day after day or headshots for the same company, this is gonna help you create a consistent look for your clients without a ton of editing and matching later on. One picture in each location, each setup, each day with this is gonna save you a ton of time in post-production later. And your clients will be happy because you're giving them consistency no matter what day you're shooting or where you're shooting. Now the fun doesn't stop with all of these colors here. You can actually pop open the tab and as you pull out the card on the other <laughs> on the other side this makes for a perfect in-camera white balance tool now as a wedding photographer this could be particularly helpful since I'm shooting in various locations and as I move around my lighting conditions change I can use this baby whenever I'm changing scenes and locations to get a perfect white balance now I know what you're thinking if you're shooting in raw why would you need a perfect white balance well for me I do same day edits on the wedding day the wedding night give them photos and even print out some of those photos I use the JPEGs off of my cards to do that same day edit so I want to make sure the white balance is on point so we're done here for the day. I use the spider checker throughout all the different shooting lighting situations. And that's the trick. You wanna take a picture every time your lighting situation changes. It is something they have to remember to do, but I promise it makes your life way easier later. It's especially helpful if you're photographing something with a beautiful color in it that needs to stay that natural color. Like Juliana's shirt, if I don't have the color right, that beautiful turquoise warm type color that it is, it's going to turn into something else, which is no bueno if you're shooting fashion. So let's get into post-processing and see what this baby has done for us. First thing to do is to import your photos into your editing software. I'm using Lightroom here. Next, navigate to the photo where you've taken a picture of the color checker and crop in so you only see the color checker. To get your white balance correct, grab the eyedropper tool and click on E2. The next step is to get the exposure correct. When you hover over E1, you want it to read 96%, so adjust your exposure until it does. On E6, when you hover over, you want it to read 4%. So adjust your blacks until it reads 4%. Now you have a correct color and exposure on this photo. Next, you wanna open this in the Spider Checker software. In Lightroom, you go to Photo, Edit in Spider Checker. First, make sure that the blocks line up on the Spider Checker photo so that they're mostly in the center. You have a couple of different modes that you can choose from. I'm gonna show you what it looks like in both saturation and portrait, because it does make a difference. 
We'll start with portrait, click save calibration and name this profile, something that you'll remember when you're going to use it later on. Next, you can build another profile using the saturation and name it something else. After you've saved those calibrations, go ahead and restart your editing program. You'll need to do this so that the presets of these profiles you've created will show up on the left-hand side. Upon opening, Lightroom lets me know that the profiles have been converted to an XMP, and I can go ahead over to the presets under user presets and see the profiles that I have created. Next, navigate over to a photo that you want to apply your profile to and click on that corresponding preset. As you can see between the saturation and the portrait profiles I've created, there's a little bit of a difference that I think makes a big difference in the skin tones. Let's take a look at all three of them. The original photo is in the top left, the portrait profile in the top right, and the saturation-based profile on the bottom. I personally like the portrait profile best, so I'm going to apply that to the rest of the photos in this scenario. Now you would repeat this process for all the different times that you changed locations or different shoots, multiple cameras, so that the same profile is across all of them. Once you've applied your profile, you can go ahead and start editing as you normally would. For me, I think this photo looks great. Maybe I wanna add a little bit more contrast and I want to go ahead and use my retouching tools in Lightroom to retouch her face. When I'm doing retouching in Lightroom, I like to soften the skin, not crazy, but just enough to brush over any impurities. I like to whiten the white parts of the eyes, and this is all done with my own production tools, which you can find in the link below. Whitening the eyes so that they get rid of some of the blood vessels, but not look like they're glowing is my goal. I also like to do things like punch the lashes, which is going to bring down the blacks in her lashes, and you can apply this to her eyebrows as well. Again, nothing too heavy, just enough to make it pop, and her eyes are a, a gorgeous color, so I'm going to saturate them a little bit and just bring out that color. Of course, I could go over to my tools and even make her eyes a little bit more blue by bringing down the white balance. The Saturate Eyes tool can also be used on the lips to bring in a little bit more color if you'd like. Editing is a little bit subjective, so you can do whatever you'd like. In my opinion, just try to make sure it doesn't look too fake. And that's it. Here's a little bit of before and after. We did our retouching, just so you can see the little bit of a difference and just makes for a cleaner image. So that's all there is to using the Spider Checker in your editing software and creating consistent color and exposure in your shoots. You can check out more details about the Spider Checker in the link in the description below. And of course, make sure you follow, share, like, subscribe, leave me some love, and I'll see you guys next time.